I am with uh, Kirk Cameron. We are at the memorial celebration of Marshall Foster and uh, up here meeting some people I haven't seen for a great, great you know, while. I hear, I hear that the Gary DeMar is here. <laughs> And I have had the privilege of talking to him for a little while. He completely messed up my eschatology years and years ago with a video series where he had he had that mustache. You remember the old mustache and and the, and the mock turtleneck, uh, but it completely was a game changer. So anyway, and, I get to talk to him. Later and the, the person responsible for that really was Marshall, Marshall Foster. Foster. It was Marshall Foster. And so uh, you did tell a little bit the story about how you how you met Marshall and how he kind of discombobulated your your worldview in, a, in, in, in another way, and it led to really a transformation of the way that you thought about everything. And you 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 put you and Marshall encapsulated all that in the film Monumental. And, and to talk a little bit about what Monumental was all about. So, let's see, when, when I met Marshall Foster, uh, you know, he's sort of half Viking, half a third Winston Churchill, a third William Wallace, and a third George Washington, or maybe Billy Graham. And he was telling me about a different breed of Christians uh, that lived hundreds of years ago uh, that weren't like a lot of these uh, milk toast pastors and, and preachers who, who wouldn't really talk about the victory of the kingdom of God on earth. They would talk about victory in heaven, but on earth it's all failure and that it's all collapsing and that the gospel is, is ultimately failing to do more than just get people to heaven. Uh, it doesn't have power to transform cultures and nations. He said, but that's, that's, that's a new way of looking at the scriptures. Let me tell you about King Alfred. Let me tell you about Patrick of Ireland. Let me tell you about the, uh, the pilgrims. And he took me to Plymouth, Massachusetts, where Plymouth Rock is, and then he pointed me a mile up a hill and said, there's a statue up there that was left for us, kind of like modern-day Gilgal stones, so that if we ever lost our way as a nation, that would point us back to prosperity, to liberty and justice that lasts. And uh, it's hidden in a forest of trees, and nobody knows it's there. You, 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 want, you could see it from the harbor when it was originally put when up. When it was originally put there, it was put there so that you could say, grandkids, now that you've seen Plymouth Rock, let me tell you uh, about what God did here and, 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 and how we build a godly nation. Let's walk up to the Liberty Monument. And uh, now you can't see it because trees have surrounded it in a residential neighborhood. He took me there, and I started to cry. And then I got angry, thinking, where was this in my civics class? Where was this when I was learning about America? I never heard about Christians founding this place. I heard that, that God, God was supposed to get out of government. And he explained this blueprint, this breakout of liberty, that said that the root of liberty was faith. And not just any faith, but faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and faith in God's Word, the Bible. And that begins to work its way through the heart, the home, all of culture, and produces liberty that must be protected and defended by individuals who have been transformed by the same process of faith, character, self-government under God's laws, and then educating yourself and your children. And if you'll do that, generationally, you will experience uh, lasting liberty internally and externally from the control of sin and tyrants who try to control you. And it was a game changer for me. And, and, and Marshall wasn't, you know, he wasn't a Pollyanna. I mean, he, saw, he, no. he, he knew what was going on around here, but he was probably one of the most optimistic, forward-thinking guys around who rooted everything in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and his moral standards. Th that's right. You're exactly right. Because uh, Marshall wasn't just trying to make you feel good. Um, he, he wasn't just trying to score points with you. Uh, he, what he was doing was actually, I think, correctly understanding the victory of the gospel that is the message of Scripture. When Jesus said, all authority has been given to me, both in heaven and on earth, and he says, may your kingdom come and your will be done in, in, on earth as it is in heaven, well, what in the world does that mean? if it doesn't mean that somehow we get to be conduits of, of heavenly influence to affect earth to make it more like heaven. And, uh, and, and what have we got to lose by giving it our all? Uh, we've got the, the, the God of heaven who said he's gonna be with us till the end of the age. 
Uh, and not only did he explain that that's the message of scripture, but he would point out how history proves that it's true because it's happened over and over and over again in cultures that were just lost causes that experienced revival and transformation, not just in individual hearts, um, but in entire uh, societies and nations. And Marshall left behind quite a legacy. The number of people who have been influenced by Marshall beyond just you uh, I mean, with probably millions of people, and I think I'm, I'm confident about the future because of people like you, people like Marshall, Bill Federer, um, and uh, Ted Bear, and so many others who are out there uh, extending the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ through the gospel and God's word. That's Thank right. you. Thank That's you, right. Kirk. I appreciate it. Good seeing you again. Great to see you. See you. Okay. Bye bye.